question. Is Thanksgiving better without family? Oh, what? Oh, really? Or is it better with family? Because um, I, it's kind of like a science experiment. We got a, we've got a, a, control, a group control group and an experimental group because I went home to visit my family. I haven't told you much about it, right. so we're gonna catch up. Um, and you stayed behind. And I haven't told you much about it. And you it. haven't told me much about it, so I wanna, I wanna figure this out. This is a legitimate, legitimate question. Um, first time ever that I went home for Thanksgiving, actually, so I guess previous years are in, in form, like an experiment within my own family of being with them or yeah, not that is for a Thanksgiving. Good, that is a good point. Um, yeah, there were th there was some strategy that went into it, and now on the back side of it, strategy. let's discuss. Let's 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 figure that out. Let's see. Let's see what social science has to say. Not really. Let's just see what we have to say. And before we get into that, I uh, I had an experience that I wanted to tell you about. Um, is that as, right? As you as you know, um, you are a massage aficionado. Yeah, I and in my next life, I'm gonna be, or in retirement, I guess, or tomorrow, if I really get fed up with this place, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a massage critic. Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go the in first like, ever like a restaurant critic. I'm gonna I'm gonna roll into places. You gonna have a blog, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have like a uh, like a like a well written assessment, very detailed about massage, the massage I've gotten. Massageexpert.blogspot.com. You might think that that. Well, Link, that's Yelp. And you might be right, but you would be wrong because I don't get paid to write on Yelp. And I would get paid to do this. Right, yeah, it's a, it's a booming business waiting to happen. So yeah, I, I find, fancy myself very into massages, well, receiving them. And, and I, uh, you know, interestingly, I think I'm just as much, <laughs> it's massageexpert.blogspot.com, it is a website. Of course it is, Link, you're gonna have to buy it from that person. It's my website. The uh, site where you can find anything about massage, exclamation point. Wow. Um, Has it been updated since when? 2000, <coughs> 2009. 2009, 2009. okay, hmm. all right. I think you can get in for a low, low price. Um, I enjoy massage as well. Uh, I, I venture to say I enjoy massage as much as you, but I have not been as aggressive in scheduling my own massages. I enjoy massage so much that two years ago, when my in-laws uh, asked my wife, what can we get? What can you get for the guy who has everything? Oh gosh. <laughs> what can you get for the guy who has a putting green at his house? What can you get for the douche? What can, <laughs> what can we get for your, for your douchebag husband? Now this is two years ago, you didn't have a putting green. Uh, not yet, yeah. Um, but you were a douche. <laughs> and, and Jesse said, you know what would be really douchey? I, by the way, I don't wanna, ever use that word again. I don't like it. You don't wanna say douche. I think it's wrong on a, on a bunch of levels. Like the word douche is something you don't wanna say. Can we can we come up with another word, because this is a running gag, but I just wanna use a different word. What is I'm, douche backwards? I'm uncomfortable with it. Shoot. <laughs> it, what is douche backwards? Can I gotta write it down. Look, here, look, look how douchey this is. I, I, I realized that I had so much merch on, and then I realized if I did this. I gotta actually write this. Equad, ec, ec, ecude, e h c u o d. Hey, look at this. Equad, equad. What ecuad. if I what if I seriously did this? Now, for those of you just listening, I I rolled my sleeves up and I got my hat on backwards. For those of you listening, you've made a great choice. <laughs> I think is what we're at. All right, do, do not watch a, the video. An equad. I mean, this is this. In fact. Keep, keep going with your story. No, no, but I would like people to take a screenshot of this and then put equad underneath it. But like, don't put me in the screenshot. Well, actually, you can put I'm me doing in it in my, I'm doing it in my camera. Oh. I got me, I got one in my camera, and I got one into the, the wide camera. You can't get out of that. Equad. So your, your in-laws ask Jesse, what could they give you, and apparently you said, a gift certificate for a massage, or do you want your in-laws to give you a massage, like both of them? Well, that was my first request. I wanted oh, a gosh. four-hander. <laughs> That's what they call that. No, uh, no they don't. <laughs> it is. I Can see, you, hold can on, you no, get no, no, a no. massage from two people at once? It's called a four-hand massage. I think that's, that's called being a monarch. 
No, forehand, I know it sounds like some weird thing you'd find on Urban Dictionary, but that's, I've literally seen. No, <laughs> don't, don't lie to my face with that hat. Anyway, I. Um, Good idea though. I request. I bet it costs over twice as much money. I requested a, I said. I, I, I wonder if, I, I'm. Okay, thanks for letting me. Yeah, not, I just feel like we're on as something. Can you call massage a massage place? Blogspot.com. Can you call a massage place and say, I would like a deep tissue massage for 90 minutes and I want two people. Can yeah. you do that? Yeah, and they say it's double the price. I mean, maybe they say it's, you know, maybe it's, you know, 1.5 the price. I don't know. Let's find out. Make a call. You guess be, that could be your first blog. Be, guess what happened <laughs> when I called and asked for a forehander? <laughs> I'm gonna do it. All right, I'm gonna do it. So anyway, Jesse said he likes massage and what that turned into is them getting me gift certificates to several massage places. And uh, of course, not being from here. Several massage places. They did not necessarily calculate the distance you know, from oh. where I'm at in town. Oh, okay, yeah. And uh, where these massage places were, and it would require a special trip, basically. And so I haven't gotten, I just haven't, I haven't done it. But when you went home for Thanksgiving, uh, you went home on a Sunday or Monday or something, and so I was here. Sunday, yeah. And uh, I would like, would like you to know, I, I did work. I did work as much as my wife would let me. Just trying to get ahead, man. Uh, but the first day of, th makes one of, us. of Thanksgiving vacation, I was like, you know what? I need the redster needs some me time, and the redster needs to go across town and you get one of these massages. You were putting into practice our last conversation, which I've thought a lot about, by the way. And uh, so I go to this uh, Thai massage place on the in east, Thailand on the west that side. Uh, no, it's just on the west side, and uh, it was. So I, I would not have been able to tell you exactly what Thai massage was even though now I realize I've had one before. Now that I've gone back, I'm like, oh, so now I understand. So I went to this place that was just really, I mean, a really cool, like, I felt like I was, it was kind of just in the, not a strip mall, but it was just in on an office block in Santa Monica, but when you when you walked in, it was just like, oh, I've been trans. I've been Transylvania? Trans ported into this rainforest cafe. Really, in Disneyland. Yeah, um, but the woman said, put this t-shirt and these pants on, and they were Thai fisherman pants, and she was like, do you know how to put those on? I was like, yeah, buddy, yeah, I do. I got a pair at home. I've Googled that. And uh, I've watched the YouTube video on right. how to do that, so yes, I know how to do it. And uh, so I was like, oh, this is interesting, because I was planning on getting naked, Underwear underneath the tie pants? Yeah, uh, no, no, I know, because I've got pants on. Right. <laughs> and then I go back out into the Until area you don't. where the, no, the, you don't take them off, you leave them on the whole time. Oh. But that's what I'm getting it to, is the massage area is basically communal. So not massage tables, but massage pads. No hole for your face, so you're not face down, you're face to the side or just face in the pillow suffocating. Are yourself. these pads on the floor like kindergartners yes. taking naps? Well, they were, yeah, they were all on the floor. I mean, it was like an elevated deck area with a bunch of curtains so that you could curtain off the different places, but there were multiple massages going on and you basically can kind of see and hear the other people who were around you and you left the, the, all this on. And then the reason that the massage happens on the floor is because this woman proceeded to do a yoga routine on my back. In fact, she may have just been doing her yoga routine. It may have had nothing to do with massaging me at all. Maybe it was just a scheduling conflict and it was just a woman who showed up for yoga and decided and, and just was on top of me the whole time. Awesome, so listen, I, I have had awesome, one of these. by the way. I, I think that we've, I think it was an early GMM episode. No, oh, those don't matter. We we. <laughs> I think we've both had and talked about massages where women would stand on our yeah. backs and hold on to bars on the ceiling yeah. and then walk on your back and give you a massage with their full body weight because they, yeah. and so, I mean, they weighed like 80 pounds. And so that, that, is, that is Thai massage. But, and, I, I, but technically the being on the floor makes it authentic. Oh, and with the curtains, did you say that they pulled a curtain around so that no one could see this happening or was it a spectator sport? For privacy, yeah, they pulled it around. Okay, so 
you couldn't see anyone else getting walked on. Right, but I knew that it was happening. I just it was like an it was like it. an operating room. But the thing that was notable about this was with curtains. Um, it was the most painful massage I have ever received. Now I, I've had I've had some painful massages. I usually tell people go as hard as you possibly can. I'll let you know if you need to let up. Oh and, yeah, and never before have I told somebody to let up. I mean, I've neither. just taken it. Me neither. You know, but this woman was poking and prodding me um, with her full body weight and it would it would get to a place where it was like every, all the weight, I, I could have sworn she was balancing on an elbow is how it felt. On, on like your mid back? She would be the mid back, the low back, the, sh- the shoulders. Now first of all, it was all this stuff happening and I was going, as she would, as she would really dig in I would go, oh, and that would be like, that would be like the first signal that like, this is painful. Was that, did you do that consciously or did it eke out as she pressed on you? It, it started in, involuntarily and then it became like a code, a language. So. Well you know everyone can hear that through the sheet. I didn't care. It hurt so bad I, I couldn't stop. Wow. But here's the thing, after a few times of going, mm, I was like, hold on, did, does that sound like I'm enjoying it? <laughs> it well, I, I can answer that and the answer is, Maybe. Yes, <laughs> and then my follow-up statement is, I don't wanna hear it again. Okay, well, you're gonna hear more than that because I gotta keep going. I gotta tell you the whole so language. You were thinking. I gotta, I gotta teach you, you the whole language. You were inventing the language. <laughs> I invented the language. So, <laughs> after about 10 minutes of going, oh. <laughs> really? I realized that she may think that I'm digging this. But you weren't. She was digging me, man. She was digging into me. Digging and, into and, me, And I yeah. knew that it was, helping, you know what I'm saying? Like she would get on a knot, I could feel her on a knot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's working that knot, I'm like, you gotta work that knot, you gotta work my booty knot. She didn't really work the booty knot. She would just work the muscle knots. Love the way you work my booty knot. And um, I'm tight, There was one, I'm so stressed. There was one time where she was so into the shoulders. Need someone to work my chest. That I was like, I'm gonna have to change the language up. And at that point I was just like, oh! <laughs> really? <laughs> oh now! <laughs> you was, said oh now! I, 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 I was like, it's, I gotta move beyond mmms, and I gotta go oh! <laughs> what and, about, how about just wait? And, oh now? I was like, oh! Yeah, cause I was like, I, Cause I thought that the next- Whoa now, too far. <laughs> I That's the rectum. The ne- what, I mean it seemed- No, to- man, it was what? on the shoulder. Oh, okay. The next part was gonna be stop. I didn't wanna say that, you know, you don't wanna do that. <laughs> stop! So I thought, oh! And then, and then at that point she was like, is this hurting you? <laughs> and uh, I was like, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> you know, he was like, yes, I feel like I'm about to die. I, I didn't say that. Now you had given her the speech, go go for it and I'll let you know if it's too much. No, no, I, because I saw what was happening, oh. I, I was like, this is gonna be painful. And, and You didn't me, say anything. Let me tell you, by the time this was over, she had done a couple of things where, she did this one thing where she sat on my shoulders like I was about to like take her on a piggyback ride. <laughs> She's like, okay, now stand up. <laughs> it's like, I Let's get out of here. What did she think? What did she? Do? I gotta <laughs> reach something on the top shelf. Am I supposed in to, the back room? Is she gonna say, "Get up"? And yeah. I'm just supposed to go? Yeah. But what she was doing it's like, is, it's she, like Yoda with Luke Skywalker, man. She was sitting on top of me, and compre- I was in. I was sitting with my legs crossed in front of me, and then she sat on my back and folded me down. Oh no. And what? I was like, and I, you know, I'm just so prideful. I'm just so prideful. I can't tell people that that shouldn't happen to me, you know. And, and so, <laughs> and so, she folds me in half, and then she's like, "You're so flexible." <laughs> and then I'm thinking, "Well, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just too prideful to say that you are breaking me in half. Like I'm going to have to go to a doctor. <laughs> well, thankfully, my back is in very good shape now compared. To that. I, I mean, especially with your back, I'm surprised. No, no, to, to, well, first of all, my back is in great shape. So I actually until that. I mean, no, no, did, I, you no, no, no. I would have stopped her if I really thought that something was going to happen with my back. I, I you were sitting I, crisscross I am, applesauce. And I am then flexible. She put your nose into the mat. Yeah, and but I am flexible. I'm very flexible. Okay, you're fl- okay. Okay, no, in and fact, you're prideful, and no, you're doing no. Okay, but yeah. I've been told by many people now. 
so flexible. My physical, my personal trainer. You know did, who you did, sound did, like, right? Did, 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 I'm so flexible. Uh, many people tell me how <laughs> flexible I am. No, well that's not like saying I'm the, I'm the humblest person I know. <laughs> I'm just saying that like, I'm proud of myself and the flexibility I've gained and I've done it for the sake of my back and it actually has been very helpful for my life and for my Thai massage experiences so I don't have to stay, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. But you, don't ride me like a horse. So, but when, when you said, am I, when she said, am I hurting you, you said, yes. I said, you could go a little easier. You made it about her. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then she said. You're not doing it right. And then she said, don't die. Pfft. Don't die. Yeah, she'd said that, but she was kinda being funny. Don't die. Anyway, I felt, I, inc- I I felt a tip. Inc- I felt incredible coming out of there and I felt like I don't know if I can do this again because I do think I was preoccupied wow. with being injured the whole time. Was it a high, it sounds like a high end place. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was very high end. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't one of, it wasn't one of these strip mall locations. That you think the cops might show up at any, any point. It wasn't one of those. It, it was, it, this is legit, man, this is legit. I got a tea after I got done and everything. Well, I've had tea. Well, I mean, lots of people have had tea. I'm t- I'm <laughs> tempted to go there because that seems like a good. Well, there, there's a, there's one on the east side a, as well. You can be a guest blogger on my site. <laughs> like guest post <laughs> yeah. from Red MC. <laughs> it is. They, oh and I, and I, no! You can have audio files of my of oh. my lang- my massage language. <laughs> Proven, proven to work. <laughs> proven to work at one time massage. <laughs> Whoa now! Whoa! <laughs> wow! Oh goodness! Uh, so that's it, man. That's my massage. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Dang, man! Snapped you in half. Uh, so we're gonna talk about Thanksgiving travels and experiences, uh, but first, I do want to let you know that you know I kind of feel self conscious about how much merch I have on right now. I've never, I don't believe I've ever done the hat and the shirt together. Um, you know, I feel like a Paul brother. It's Sorry. happening though. You got yourself a good mythical hat available at mythical dot store. Yep. No hats not even available. Anymore? It's that sold hat out, sold man. out. We've moved on to new hats. Check them out. This shirt here av- available at mythical dot store. Is that available? Oh yeah, that one's. Available. But this is not. This sold out. This is sold out, man. You see, there was one with a pocket. That's just sold selling out. out, man. Yeah, boil for safety. You got to get it while it getting's good. Sold mythical dot store. Got to keep them guessing. Supported entertainment. Supported entertainment. And rep, rep your boys. <laughs> Mythical dot star. Rep your boys. I like that. I decided. Well, it was it was a long. Actually, many years went into when is the 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 Christmas that we're not going to go home, but mm-hmm. we're going to stay here in Los Angeles and celebrate as just an immediate family. Every single year, I guess for six years. Well, I, I try eight. Really? Yeah. This Christmas will be eight years in Los Angeles for us? This Christmas would be the ninth. Wow. Because your first one was in 2011, mm-hmm. right? And so if you yeah. count the one and the eight. No, so this year would be, yeah, this year would be the ninth. Okay, I'll take your word for it because my brain's kind of hurting. Right? No, I think it's one No, less. this year would be the eighth. This year would be the eighth. You so, started in 2011. So the seven previous years we go home, we'd stay here for Thanksgiving or go on vacation. That was the, because summers were so crazy, we would take vacations over Thanksgiving, we both would. We both would. Uh, and then for Christmas time, um, leading up to the new year, we'd go home for the past seven years. But um, I don't know, you kinda, you kinda wanna experiment and say, what, it, you're not, you don't have your own thing, okay? You, with your immediate family, like before we moved, we were starting to do the thing where grandparents and and aunts and uncles or slash siblings would come visit us and we'd have our own thing and our own traditions and then people would show up at different times and we'd still go to places on Christmas night or Christmas Eve, that type of stuff, but like we had special Christmas morning. That was a special time for us. Very special. Uh, insert whatever special holiday time for you and your family is appropriate if 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 it's a different set of holiday. It's still all applicable, I believe. <laughs> I just wanna include you all. Um, but, my, but my point is, once we moved out here, we didn't have any of that because like the, the week leading up to Christmas and all the way afterward, it was just, we were itinerant. And I've talked about this 
I'm, I'm sure on the podcast many times as we've um, caught each other up. But we decided, okay, this is the year we're gonna, we're gonna stay here, um, but we'll go home for Thanksgiving instead. And it'll be a little early and then we'll, we'll, we'll help, we'll talk it over with family members. Um, you know, some have a more developed opinion than others. Oh, and you know, really? you gotta talk to them in certain orders and um, get everybody's buy-in. But everybody was very gracious, um, and it turns out they were even thinking, "Yeah, I think this would be good for 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 you guys. You know, your kids are getting older. You need to have your own traditions and your own things that you want to do." So, I was very relieved that um, all of our family was on board. So, you think this is the new normal? Um, I think it it can go either way now. But I at this point, I'm. I mean, well, I haven't experienced Christmas here, so I don't know. If it goes as well as I have like super high yeah, hopes. Christmas here may suck, man. It may suck, I don't know. But people say it's a ghost town here in Los Angeles. It's like it, it transforms into a different city where no one's here and like I'm pretty interested in that. That would be cool. And I just have the run of the city. Yeah. Just have the run of the city. Just like take Christmas trees everywhere. Just like loot, like go looting. With my family, that's what I plan oh, to do. That's good. That's good. <laughs> take take empty stockings and fill them with people's valuables. Yeah, that's a fun Christmas tradition. So I I don't know. The jury's still out, but I'm saying that that's a possibility that it may be the new normal when you're talking about traditions like that. People can come visit us and be a, and and be included in it. We're not being exclusive. But anyway, it felt really good for for people to be supportive, and so we went home for Thanksgiving um, as part of that, and we stayed at. Uh, Christy's sister's house where we, that's that's our home base now. Um, and my nephew, Nehemiah, he's three years old and uh, he's wide open. It was, it, was, it, was, it was great to be there and hang out with him and, and the kids just, you know, hanging out with him. But he got this, he wanted to perform these songs. Hmm. He has original songs. Cool. So okay. everyone would be sitting around and he would get up in front of everybody and he would, he would make Lincoln Orlando play the drums. He'd be like, okay, play really hard. Like play really, and he would get, he'd get angry. He'd be like, he would like channel anger as a way to say how hard he wanted the drums to be played. I like this kid. On like a basket. He'd be He's like, three? play harder. And he would grab the hands that are holding the sticks and he would say, play really hard. And then once you got it to like Lars, not Lars Ulrich, but what's the, the drummer for Metallica? Is that him? How about the drummer for John Cougar Mellencamp, Kenny Aronoff? <laughs> what about John Bonham? I mean, once once he got Lincoln to full John Bonham, like just breaking 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 sticks, then he starts singing, and he's like, uh, Brittany kept having to encourage him. Now remember, we're going to use a singing voice, not a yelling voice. I like this kid a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love him. Screaming and I like already, him. and he's like, he he just launches into. We make the rules, we make the rules, we make the rules. And it turns out this was a collaboration with another cousin of his that wasn't present at the time, so that was the we. The we, I was about to say. He okay, and his right. other cousin. They, it's very insightful, you know. Um, it gives lots of insight into the psyche of a three-year-old Right, there is a song. To this boy, which, at least. There is a song in which they've created a world in which they make the rules. They're, yeah, they're in charge. We make the rules. Because the world is all about rules when you're three. Yes, it's all about rules. It's like, you know what, we're gonna make them. Ulti and, ultimately, and, you realize that he captured basically the spirit of rock and roll <laughs> in, in, in yeah. his song. Yeah, man. Is that, no, if, if we rock, make the rules. If rock and roll were acapella except for your older cousin playing drums on a wicker basket, then yes. I'm saying. That's like intense rock that, and roll. That is yeah. the underlying message of all rock. Not the sound though. Right. Maybe in the voice, like the screaming could even work. You don't even have to tell him not to scream. And then there was another one that, I don't remember the tune, but it was basically something like, anything we can do, we can do. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like the same I like that. concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it was, I don't remember the exact words, but it was basically like that. We can do anything that we can do, <laughs> and we're gonna do it. It's kind of a tautology. You know why? 
because if you flip the record over, we make the rules, and you would cheer, and it was fabulous, I can man. Listen. It's like, yes, make the rules, yeah. Nehemiah. Do that. Your your wife actually, or your wife, I don't know, somebody in your family did post this on, uh, uh, on, their, on, Instagram? on their Instagram. So I did, I had to say that I have seen the We oh, Make you the saw Rules. That? I've been singing it all week. Yeah. <laughs> Can't get it out of my head. We make the rules. I mean, it's kind of like that. Anything you can dream, you can do. That Lando right. performed at his school. That one of the guys, one of the parents wrote, and then I was like, "That's not true, Lando." Remember? Oh yeah, yeah totally. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro broke his, shattered his dreams. But I'm like, but you know what? You can make some rules. <laughs> you and Nehemiah <laughs> can make your own rules. Um, the day before Thanksgiving, we went to my Nana's house, my dad's mom's house. And you know, uh, I'm not gonna get too sad, but I will say that it, it was it, it was it was difficult in 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 one way in particular because it was the first time Papa wasn't there, you know, having passed away mm -hmm. um, months ago. and with my uncle Dan also passing away right before that, which I've talked about on the show. So it's like there was this anticipation of okay, there's going to be some some empty seats, so to speak. Now I don't. There was there was never a plan to leave seats empty, but actually, actually, what happened? What had happened was after our concert, I've told you this, right? We we went to um, well at. At our concert at the North Carolina State Fair, my mom and Lewis rode there with my dad and Nancy. So this is your parents and their new partners hanging out together. Yeah, and Nana all rode in dad's truck up there because they were concerned about parking. But it has been 30 years or more more than that since your parents were to, to a couple, so it's, it's. Oh yeah. it's We've had a lot of time for the for the awkwardness to settle a little bit. Well. But they, it's still, they, but they it's still never, unusual. They have never ridden in the same car anywhere. Right, 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 right. And so when um, when Dad and Nancy offered to take them, I was like, okay, I'll let them know. And then like, they did it and it went great. And then come to find out on the ride there or the ride back, they're talking about Thanksgiving plans and how we're coming into town for Thanksgiving, not Christmas at the time. And they're like, you know what? Dad and Nancy were like, Sue, you and Lewis should come to our Thanksgiving. And I'm hearing about this and I'm like, <laughs> after they had decided, they were yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah. we were invited. I was like, oh, it's, I was like, sounds weird, but. Awesome. Great. Okay. We make the rules. <laughs> <laughs> so, but hold for on. the first time ever, my mom came to my dad's side of the, to, to like a, a big family event on my dad's side of the family. But I will say, because. For, Even birthday parties growing up. I mean, they were all separate. I'd have twice as many birthday parties, right. twice as many Christmases. But what, what I'm getting at is, you know, uh, this is, you know, super common in our in in modern society for families to split up and there'd be two entities, and then the children have to kind of make choices and go from place to place. Right. It is pretty novel concept if you can all get along. I mean, Just get together. It sounds it because, sounds like a movie, which Chris, it probably is. Yeah, Christmas Eve, we'd always go to Nanny's house, my yeah. mom's mom, my dad's side of the family had nothing to do with it because Christmas night was Nana's night for my dad's side of the family. My mom had nothing to do with that. I was the only one that would do both, and it was great because I got, you know, you, you end up getting a lot more presents, I think. Well, yeah, definitely. Um, but now I don't really get much presents, and this is Thanksgiving, so presents are out of the equation. Oh, your family doesn't do Thanksgiving presents, huh? No, they don't. We don't. We're not even thankful. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. So we don't even do thankful. It was. It was this interesting dynamic, and there's like, I mean, there's. I think there were. What was the number? It ended up being like 16 people there. So it wasn't like an awkwardly small group of people sitting around a small table. It was still a very. We're putting a bunch of tables together. It was. It turned out to be, you know, it was. There were still moments of. It being very sad, you know, it's like r really experiencing missing these key members of our family for the first time. So I'm, it 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 in no way erases that, but it created something new. I mean, my cousin Kurt and th they had a they had a newborn, you know, three months old. First time we met the baby, it was like so. There's all this excitement that like 
gives gives something to celebrate, you know, which was um, very much needed. And then it's like, and then I look down at that end of the table and it's like, my mom's sitting there. It's like so weird, but like, this is great. I mean, I think everybody's having a good time. And you know, everybody did have a good time. It all worked out. And at one point, you know, I've talked about Lewis, my my stepdad, who I'll never call my stepdad because of, that's just weird because he got they got married way after I got married. But I'm like, his catchphrase, good, good, good. <laughs> talked about that, right? Yes. We talked about the. We built it up with the kids. We're like, all right, Papa Lewis is gonna be at the Thanksgiving dinner tonight. And they're like, tonight at Nana's? I'm like, yes. So let's do a drinking game, kids. Be, be on, every every yeah. time he says, good, good, good. <laughs> you take a shot of gravy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Um, and yeah, I'm like, so you gotta listen for it. And then lo and behold, the kids get up from the table after, like, we're all sitting there at the table after the food, after everybody's eaten. Some people start getting up, they're doing stuff, but most of the people are still at the table. And then I, Lewis is like, oh boy, that was good. My ears perk up. <laughs> and I look over, I look across the table at Christy. He's and like, like pulling a cord. <laughs> Christy's eyes met mine and, she, and he was like, oh gosh, that was good. Good, good, good. I was like, <laughs> yes! And then Chris and I looked at each other and that was like the best moment of Thanksgiving. And then I look around for the kids and they're not at the table. Oh, they didn't even witness it. I think Lily was at the table and she didn't hear it somehow. Uh, and that was the only good, good, good of the whole. You're kidding. That's the only one he did. And he gave you like a, a warning shot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody could have gathered hey, around during that pause. I got it, I got it. I just wanted the kids to get it. I mean, the next day, which was Thanksgiving day, we're at Nanny's house. So my mom's side of the family, my dad and Nancy weren't invited to that. I don't know, it didn't go both ways. I don't know mm, what happened. Interesting. Um, and we're there and Lewis didn't give a good, good, good there. It was good, good, good. Did he good. have a bad, bad, bad Thanksgiving? Well, <clears throat> after, it was great. Thanksgiving was great there. It was like Nanny and her siblings. Uncle Jimmy was there. Never seen Uncle Jimmy. Yeah. He was there. He's hard. To, He's hard to understand. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way he talks. It's just I'm just saying. It needs to be subtitled. Yeah, it needs to be. He's like he needs to have his own subtitle around need, his neck. You need to have a relative. He needs to have an like iPad a, that he a, wears. <laughs> that subtitle. I'm not him. gonna do an impersonation <laughs> because I don't. I think that would be cruel. But it's. Uh, yeah. It. I, I, I love him for it. It's just you gotta. That's the thing about getting together with your family is just. Yeah, I'm in more observation mode. You know, it's not like we're getting into deep conversations or anything. We're just sitting around. Nanny gets so cold that she set the, literally it was like 85 degrees. Uh, tropical. And so like after, after we've eaten and it's 85 degrees and you're sitting shoulder to shoulder in this like carpeted living room with like the kerosene heater on, like everybody just started wilting, man. <laughs> and then a couple of family members would have to go outside to smoke and then they'd come back in and like me and Christy are really sensitive to the smell of smoke and like we got headaches from just the residual smell on the clothes and we started to really have a difficult time. So we had to, I was like, well, mom and Lewis had to go to Lewis's family's thing and then we, we were gonna stay like two more hours. I'm like, after another hour and the dog show's over and stuff, I'm like. The dog show? We were wilting, we had to like get out of there. So I'm like, well, and we had seen Nanny another day before, so we got some good quality time in and then I was like, we said our goodbyes and headed out. And then we get out to the car and Chris is like, well, we can't go back to Brittany's because they're not there, they're at JB's family's house and we don't have a key. So then we don't have somewhere to be for like two and a half hours. I'm like, well, I really need a coffee and it's Thanksgiving day and we're driving around to McDonald's and then I get to the McDonald's, I'm like yes and then the daggone McDonald's is closed. Oh yeah, cause you're in And I look in across, Lillington, I right? look across, I'm in Anger and then I look yeah. across the street and there's a, they got like a gas station, I can't get gas station coffee so then we drive to Fuquay, I'm like, there's a McDonald's in Fuquay, there's a Starbucks in Fuquay. I go to both of those, they're both closed. I'm getting desperate. I go to the Dunkin' Donuts, closed. I'm starting to feel like a real loser now. Yep. I'm driving my family around on Thanksgiving Day just fiending for coffee. 
and and getting turned away like Les Mis. Well, okay, that's a little, nah, okay. I don't remember the story of Les Mis, I didn't watch the movie. You know, it's exactly like that. <laughs> Chrissy's like, there's a Sheets. I'm like, gas station coffee? Oh, Sheets. We go to Sheets. Uh, uh, sheets is not a gas station. Well, you know what, she, I, Sheets. You know what, I have never been in a Sheets. I've never been inside of one. What? I've heard about them. You can order food from the gas pump. You can order, you can order lattes from a screen inside, which I did. Of course you did. And that explains why on Christmas Day, me and my immediate family were playing cards for an hour and a half in a Sheets gas station because we had no where to be. It, that's why we. I got a, a group text of what you were, uh, uh, pl you playing cards <laughs> in a gas station on Thanksgiving. And you know, I felt kind of defeated. I'm like, is this a father fail? Does this speak, does this, does this answer the question at the top of the show that like, it's better to not be with family on Thanksgiving because here I am choosing to play cards just with my kids and my wife in a Sheets gas station? I mean. And then Christy's like, you know what? This could be a tradition. Oh gosh. And it's a magical phrase. No matter what happens, if it's bad, try this. Next time you're in like a, a weird, defeated, or odd holiday situation, just don't even think about it. Just say it out loud. Speak it into the ether. This could be a tradition. Everything changed at that moment. Like I got a tingle up my spine. I'm like, sheets, you know what? A sheets tingle. I got a sheets tingle. I'm like, yeah. We can even if we're not here for Thanksgiving, we can fly all the way here to go to this sheets. And it's like, no, we didn't mean that. But it changed the perspective on the whole thing. Well, um, a sponsorship from Sheets would definitely change. Okay, yeah, work it. Change the work it. Change it. So that. That was my Thanksgiving. And by the way, then I left there and we met Britton and his family at a Waffle House. So I went from a Sheets and then spent the next two and a half hours at a Waffle House on Thanksgiving night. That's, a, that's an upgrade. Uh, both places are great, but Waffle House, that, that's prime. I walked in, we walked in the prime. Waffle House and I, the manager looked at us and he said, out loud, basically at the top of his voice, he said, what the hell? <laughs> and I thought it was like, yeah, Thanksgiving night, I know, we're here at a Waffle House. Of course, so are you, manager. It's great that you're here so that I can be here. And then it turned out at the end, he was a fan. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't tell me that until and that the, was his reaction. Two and a half hours later. So yeah, gas station and a Waffle House on Thanksgiving night. It can be a tradition. That's, that's my update, brother. Okay. Well, I had a different, I had a different, different experience. Um, Pretty much same backstory. Been going home for Christmas every year. Yeah, but uh, all of a sudden we can't go home for either Thanksgiving or Christmas because of my son's basketball commitments, um, which just may means we're going to get the LA Christmas as well. But we also got the LA Thanksgiving. We got family coming out for Christmas, so taking care of that. But um. After having been, you know, we've traveled for the, as a family for the past few Thanksgivings, and so this was sort of the first, uh, like, friend, well, we've done, we did like the Friendsgiving thing years ago, but right, this was it's kind of a new, a new group of people, and um, uh, the people who invited us were very close to, but then they kind of invited a lot of people that they know that they're close to, so there was people that I had seen like once and there was people I'd never seen. And we were talking like 25 people at this Friendsgiving. Which is big in LA. Yeah, cause you got all these people who don't go back home and nobody is with their extended family and so. You don't wanna find yourself alone in the sheets. And you got a lot of, you got a lot of single people, you got a lot of uh, young couples without children. And so I think between, it was basically just, you know, me and my kids and then one of their family and their kids were the only like families with kids and then everybody else was, you know, younger, more, I saw, more vibrant. I saw a picture of the group, sharp looking group, big group. Gr I'd say group. there was 24 There's people 20, there. 25. 25 people? Yeah, yeah, you dressed up a little bit for it. I did? 
I thought that you did. It looked like you were wearing a sweater. I had a sweater on. Yeah, I had my Thanksgiving sweater on. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's made out of turkey feathers. <laughs> <laughs> if you had been close enough, you could have seen that. <laughs> I'll have to zoom in. Out of my cranberry pants. <laughs> but you couldn't see that maybe right. because, because of the angle. It The pants were made out of like the- um, The skins of cranberries. The, the, the skin yeah. that hangs off a turkey's neck. <laughs> yeah, right, they're just bright red. <laughs> Wrinkly. Looks like leather unless you get like close. Like a turkey nut sack. <laughs> <laughs> scrotum pants. But the scrotum does hang from the chin of a turkey. Dot, dot com. So dot I was com. I was very excited uh, because uh, you know me, I love to eat. And I was very excited because uh, the friend of the person who was kind of throwing this was like, they're gonna take care of the food. Um, and a few people did make make things to bring. Like my wife made uh, a sweet potato casserole, southern style, with some pecans on top, brown oh, sugar. Yeah. You know, uh, just 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 a traditional Thanksgiving side, very good. And here's what I'll say: I call that a pre dessert, not I, a side, not a I, dessert. But anyway, I enjoyed the meal quite a bit. You, know, you had your you had your staples and your turkey, you had your gravy. Um, you cranberry sauce, chutney, whatever. And then like the sides that people had brought. Uh, but I did notice something, you know, first of all, there was obviously a vegan option for basically everything. And this is Los Angeles. So you got like a vegan option for the turkey, but it wasn't like a tofu turkey. They had like Satan, mm -hmm. which I call Satan. I just <laughs> go straight for that. It's very big of you to invite Satan to your Thanksgiving <laughs> celebration. Satan steak, we have cut him up and served him on Thanksgiving. Be thankful for his death. Um, but the thing that I kinda noticed is that the only thing on my plate that had the quantities of butter and sugar and flour that I feel like constitutes Thanksgiving yeah. was what my wife brought. I, and I gotta say, I know that that's just a Southern boy coming to Los Angeles. I, I specifically remember one of the first potlucks we ever came to when we came out here. Um, this, this, this. It was quite the eye-opening, mouth-shutting experience. Yeah, yeah, it was like all these people brought all these sides. And this one girl was like, I, I, I made this, this is Paula Deen's recipe. And I'm like eating it, I'm like, really? Cause she's, and then as I'm eating it, she's like, and you know what? I used half the butter and half the sugar that Paula called for and it's still good. And I'm thinking, Paula knows best, bro. <laughs> she, have you seen the silhouette of that woman? She knows <laughs> how much butter and sugar you're supposed to put in things. Right, right. And there's just a different mentality. And you know what? It's probably a better mentality. It's probably a mentality that lives to, that leads to a longer, healthier life, but when you, Thanksgiving only comes once a year. When you've decided to throw caution to the wind, I could have. Unfurl the sails. I could have butter injected directly into my veins on Thanksgiving. I would do that oh, if that was a thing. We could make it a tradition. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got to, so, cause dessert time happened and I was like, oh, there's a pumpkin pie. And then I, they had labeled everything and it was pumpkin pie, vegan. Vegan. And I was like, mm. And there was like chocolate pie, raw, vegan. What? And then it was like some kind of bites, vegan. Man. And uh, now you know how vegan people normally feel, <laughs> right? And here, and so what I thought was, I was just like, man, I just want to go to Ralph's right now, right now, and just get a pumpkin pie from Ralph's. You know, yeah. just get a grocery store pumpkin pie, yeah. put some whipped cream on top and then unbutton my pants and enjoy myself, right? <laughs> you know? Um, so that was an adjustment. It was an adjustment that I feel like I can be ready for next year. Mm. It, it just, I think I'm gonna bring my own butter and my own sugar. And I I'm just gonna, well, just a, a squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. <laughs> IV, bring an IV bag. A squeegee of butter and then like a sugar shaker and I'm just like, don't mind me. You know, just to kind of get things up to the standard. <laughs> uh, just but, bring stuff and label it unapologetically unvegan. Yeah, right. Oh, that sounds like a good brand. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and then the tagline is "Make it a tradition." 
We sell it at Walmart. Don't don't, don't make millions. Don't, don't commercialize my holiday. I slogan. can't help but commercialize things. Man. I I helped a lot of people, man. But one tra- I didn't make a dime. Off one of traditional it. thing that happened was is um, uh, the host said we're going to go around and we're going to say what we're thankful for. And we're going to do and we're and because it's Los Angeles. You kind of have to say we're going to do the cliche thing, and we're going to say what we're thankful for. Hmm. Um, and you know, everybody was saying kind of the traditional things, you know, family and friends. What and was your gut knee jerk reaction to, to that announcement? Um, I, well, I'm and all. I can think of three. What was my gut knee jerk reaction to having? To the announcement of, of the assignment that this, this cliche thing was gonna happen. Well, there's always a slight increase in heart rate. Yeah. I think that for every normal normal person, even somebody who. Don't speak for people, I'm yeah. asking for you. Don't normalize your response. Just tell me what yours was. I'm curious. Well, a slight increase in heart rate. Okay. Uh, and then um, that's normal. Most people that would. And then like, okay, I'm. I, I got to say something that sort of mixes humor and heart and heart right. in the right way. Right. This to, is a, you know this is a branding moment. <laughs> um, um, I don't exactly remember what I said. I was thankful for. Uh, because because there was a second question that I do remember everything that I said. Which, oh, you don't even, you don't remember what you were thankful. No, for. it was something about new new friends and family, and then I said so I I made a joke. Um, it went over well, trust me. <laughs> um, but then the second thing that happened while we were eating, which I found very interesting, was there was a guy there that was a life coach. Again, of course. Was he paid to be there? If you, you know, if you get if you get twenty five people together in Los Angeles, <laughs> one, one of them will be a life coach. coach. <laughs> so that's um, code for something, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what. If you, if you don't have one life coach per twenty five people in Los Angeles, the entire city implodes. It's funny that the the cashier at Sheets was a life coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, did he have a tag? How did you know he was a life coach? Well, a hat. If someone is a life coach or a vegan or into CrossFit. You know it, yeah, right. You know what I'm saying, you find, <laughs> you, you find out pretty early in the right, conversation. Right, right. <laughs> so, I. Uh, That's true. I, um, he stands make up. a list of those things. He stands up and he says, um, uh, we're gonna all answer this question. And again, I, I liked it because I, it was intentional conversation and yeah. it was 25 people at a table and you're kind of talking to the people around you but then it's kind of putting everybody on the spot. Even the mm. kids, like the mm. kids had, my, both of my kids had to stand up and answer oh, this question. Snap. But it was the traditional question of, if you had a superpower, what would it be and what would be your first mission? Oh, I, haven't, I actually haven't heard what would be your first mission. First mission was new to me because that's oh, the kind new. of thing that a life coach adds to it. You understand? Right, right. Keep it. Because f- what's your favorite superpower? Fresh. That's just normal folk. What's your first mission? Life coach, business card. Here you go. Uh, but the heart rate goes up even more when that happens. Yeah, like, I'm like ooh, now l- curveball. <laughs> now, now it's precious time to shine. <laughs> 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 um, so I said. Um, and it was, we, one guy requested, he said, can we, instead of going around, can we just do popcorn style? Can we just, as you know, what you, can you share? I was like, that's a good idea. What, why is that a good idea? Uh, because because he, he, wanted to, he wanted to get dibs because of on the, invisibility in, the in, or something. Because of the inevitability of it coming to you and you're just thinking about what you're gonna say. It, like He had a reason, it was good. I, I thought it was great at the moment. But, uh, I had actually had this exact discussion with my wife the week before. Now, we've, we've talked about what our favorite superpowers would be before we argued about it at some point on the debate rama I think. If you believe in freedom, you believe in flight. Invisibility is to hide yourself from freedom, like a shameful, naked mole rat. Don't be deceived, flight is not heroic, it is self-absorbed showboating. Look at me, I'm air swimming. I can't remember any of the things that we do around here, but <laughs> I know we've talked about superpowers, and I personally. Invisibility versus invincibility was one of our first But we did videos. invisibility versus flight, and then. Yeah, we did. I've always said that, that teleportation is the, is the superpower that I would choose because it replicates, technically can replicate invisibility and flight for all practical purposes. I, I would, are you asking me now? Because I would choose 
uh, being able to double myself and be invisible so I could w creep on myself and not even know it. Wow, interesting and disturbing. But I did not say that because that's the, just the canned answer. I actually said what I this talked to my wife about. This is Thanksgiving, you don't eat canned ham. I was, I, Jesse and I were, were with each other eating something and I was eating some bad food. Is this a dream? No, no, you this, lost is me. The, this is the week before that okay. gave me the answer to the superpower thing. Okay. And I said, you know what? If I could have a superpower, it would just be to turn everything that is bad for me to eat into things that are good for me. The whole thing would just flip. So it would be like, you know, fried chicken, processed meats, and it would be, not only would it taste good, but it would make me feel the way that good, healthy food would feel and, and be, you know, synthesized by your body. So, did you tell them this and did that just incriminate you and what you were, con the thoughts you were consumed by? What, so, I was like, I'm gonna go early because I want, so I can enjoy everyone's answer. Oh, I right, like right. that. So, people got up and, and said a couple of things that were kind of fun, kind of interesting, and I was like the third, and I said, well, I've actually been thinking about this because Jesse and I were talking about this last week and I said that I would turn everything that's bad for me into things that were good for me. Um, and my first mission would to be would be to start eating. <laughs> and uh, that's good. It, you know, it, it that's the closer. It, 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 yeah, it was the, you know, I I set it up. I landed the punchline. Sat I, down. I got some jokes. I sat down. Everything's great. I'm riding high. Then somebody turned the tables. Somebody actually stood up and said, "I would have the power to heal," and I would. Heal the world. Okay. And I was like, uh oh, this is where this is going? I thought this was fun party conversation. Next thing I know, people are standing up and they are. C crying? <laughs> no, 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 no. So our friend, uh, Mike, smartest guy we know, uh, he actually gave a really hilarious yet really like Man, this is a great answer. He he stood up and said that he would have the ability to manipulate matter, not on the atomic level, therefore not to induce a singularity, but on the molecular level. And he would take all the carbon that is loose in the atmosphere and send it to the core of the earth to take care of the global warming problem. And he, he explained this in a very scientific way that was pretty awesome. And, uh, and that, just as as the things went by, people talked. One person said, "I would give the power of empathy. I would have the power of empathy, and I would be able to give it to people just by having an interaction with them. I would." It, I, so my answer about just turning fried chicken into something that was good for me <laughs> got more and more. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, just sort of uh, shallow if you will. As vapid, is that a, the right a, word? As we proceeded. But I really enjoyed the conversation and then somebody did say, eventually somebody was like, screw it, I, and they went and they went back into fun. Okay. Fun levels of conversation. But, uh, here, but I, so I wasn't with my family. My, I was with my immediate family, but we're talking about is extended family when we talk about Thanksgiving. Um, is Thanksgiving better with family? And uh, you know, my mom like is sending me pictures of First of all, she's sending me pictures of what the plate of food that she has made looks like, and I'm like, oh baby, yes, that's what I want right now. Uh huh. Uh, proper it's, amounts. It's all you can think about. Proper and, amounts and of talk about during sugar. structured sharing time. And uh, <laughs> yeah, if I could have one superpower, it'd be if my mom would be here <laughs> serving me Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> um, but I um, that's that, I, that may be the answer. Well, huh? I mean. There's there's something that can't be replicated. You, there, there's a connection that you have with your extended family that can't be replicated. There's also a level of like, okay, now you're a little bit tired of each other and you gotta you know go play cards at a gas station. But then on the opposite end of the spectrum, there's like, I'm meeting new people, I'm answering this question that a life coach has come up with and it's probably making new neurons grow in my brain or something. Um, so, I don't know. I honestly can't tell you which one is is a holistically a better experience. I th I don't know. I think what you described sounds like something that if you'd have told me that was, you know, February 2nd 
in LA. Maybe you could have been in that type of circle. Oh, but then we did karaoke. Oh, you did karaoke. The life coach brought in a karaoke machine. Well, isn't he a ball of yarn? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a saying you just came up with? Because that sounds like a good saying. That's a, it's a saying that cats say if they're in this conversation. Oh. I'm you not, wouldn't know about I'm not that. not interested. He brought in a karaoke machine and everyone ended up singing karaoke, including my own kids, who wow. together sang a, a Bruno Mars song and I <laughs> don't wanna say which one it was because you may question my uh, oh. my parental in, uh, intuition. Um, but well, the problem is you parent via intuition. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, what are you, a, a palm reader? But um, no, but we had a great, first of all we were there from like two o'clock to 11 o'clock. I mean it's a long, long freaking time. A lot longer than you had at the, at your I, I probably would have ducked out of that too. Once the karaoke machine came out though, you felt like you had to stay, mm. you know. Uh, karaoke on Thanksgiving. I, I don't know, I, I think that, I'm I'm very thankful that, because I'm like, well yeah, I we didn't go around and say what we're thankful for. Like no life coach stood up and like gave some sort of assignment. And I, I, I'm like, man, maybe that should have been me. Maybe I should have been the life coach. Yeah, well. Mm -hmm. I regret that a little bit because I mean we had good conversations though, you know. And then there was the good, good, good moment. I mean there were there were <laughs> lots of great things. There was a baby being passed around for the first time. That's cool. There was all types, you know, family coming back together. I mean, it was a beautiful thing. Like I wouldn't change any of it. I, again, even the gas station part, which I, which is a highlight. You know, the whole thing, it, just embracing, just even the parts that feel stagnant, like sitting on a couch with all these people and just watching the dog show on mute. Which is the only way to watch a dog show. Is a show. beautiful thing. So, I don't know. I think it's, especially when you, when you live, when you don't live with them. I, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna come down on this. I'm not, I'm not gonna say, you know, they're, they're both, they could be either. I'm actually gonna come down on this and I'm gonna come down on the side of, with the caveat of living away from family that you don't, you don't see, it becomes that much more important and I think it's, even if nothing changes or it even feels like it doesn't meet your expectations because somehow that's always still a part of it, honestly, going back home for the holidays, there's like this like, man, this is just not what I hoped it would be because you start judging everything and all the conversations and because it's ch it's charged with, okay, this is, this is, the this is the one of the few times that we can all get together. Can't we just make it very special? The answer is not any, not much more special than if you live there, but just seeing them, by definition, it becomes more special. And I, I think I'm coming down on that side that it's better with family, even if it's miserable. And again, I didn't describe misery, but I'm saying even if it were that, I think it's, I think it's better because it's an institution. But, it's a family institution. But what if you incorporated? I mean, next year, if this is going to be your thing. What if next year, you don't have to say you're a life coach, but you come with a conversational topic and a karaoke machine? And a, best of, yeah, I could do that. You it's know, like last year at you Christmas. You know what I was saying at karaoke? We ended up playing that bean doozled game and I had like old people eating dirt flavored <laughs> jelly beans, it was beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. Grass flavored beans. What did you sing? Uh, was it a country song? Nope. Was it? Um, let me just was put it, it from this way. the '80s. Yes, and let me put it this way: Was it R&B? The song before it was with somebody saying Whitney Houston's "I Want to Dance with Somebody," and I leaned over you, to that's the, my song. And then I, I would have done that. I leaned over to the to the life coach slash DJ, and I said, "I want to keep the party going. I want to keep the dance party going." 80s. I want to keep this vibe going. And something that I can sing. Something you can sing that's not. Something that I've sung with you. But it, was it a dance song? It's not, the word dance is not in the title, but it is a, yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. 
you definitely want to move when you hear it. Is it a Lionel song? Yes. All night long. Yes. You sang all night long. Yes, I did. Tumbalita set the boy. Yeah. Man, I. Hey, jumbo jumbo. What you're supposed to say? Did you get them to sing that? Uh, did everybody? Was everybody like, hey, jumbo jumbo? Well, the, some people, the people who knew it. I had it. I had the wait to party. Oh, wait, go when. I had the words on the iPhone, and so no one else could see them. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the guy handed me his phone. Oh, the, the the karaoke the the karaoke slash life coach had a phone, and okay. he was like giving it to you, so you were looking at the lyrics. Oh. So, uh, I couldn't I couldn't broadcast it. It wasn't being projected. It wasn't so, that level. Maybe next year. So where are you coming down on this question? Maybe I took the safe road in terms of family members, but. I think that's I think that's where I'm at. I feel like if you're if you're isolating, I think a trip back home is um, it encompasses more than just the Thanksgiving experience because you're hanging with, with, with and seeing these people that you don't see on a regular basis. So I would say that if you take a look at the whole Thanksgiving holiday, I think that ultimately I'd rather see my family. But I think that if you just give me that isolated, curated, because I feel like I had a curated Thanksgiving experience, and again, there was some there there was some two healthy options that I feel like colored that a little bit. But like I said, I think I can I can just take care of that next year and be like, hey, bring just get some pumpkin pies from the grocery store, mm -hmm. make a big thing of mac and cheese, bring the sweet potatoes. You know, just make sure there's enough high calorie stuff as an option. So you're saying if the, it, your answer is still about if the food were just a little better, then it would have been perfect. Oh, uh, you know what, I'll take it back. What about empathy and, and uh, carbon? Because the food, because the food is such a big part of Thanksgiving for me, I think I gotta be with mama on Thanksgiving if I have to make a choice. You do. Yeah. Well, we know what we're doing next year. <laughs> I'll see you at the sheets. Well, and the thing is, is I'm I'm gonna have an LA as long as Locke's playing basketball. I'm gonna have an LA Thanksgiving for the next mm. four years. So, Mama gonna have to come out here and make some food for us. Hey, jumbo jumbo, burn up, burn up. Oh, 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 oh yeah. We're gonna have a party. You don't even know the words. Yeah, well, I gotta have the phone. You know, it's just, I haven't sung that song enough. I didn't actually sing it all night long one time. All right, so let us know about your experience. Hashtag Ear Biscuits. You do? You, do you love your family? <laughs> I love my family. That's the question. I do. And then you ended up you ended up watching that uh, Tiger and Phil. Golf oh, yeah. thing w wasted my day doing that. I, I was flying. I was Friday. I was flying back. I paid or, for it. I would have twenty bucks. I would have watched that. I watched it. Yeah. That's a good way to watch golf. It seems like I would have done that. Uh, I think the consensus was it was a bit of a flop, is what people thought, because they're both kind of old and at least Phil considered a little irrelevant now. But he beat Tiger, so give me a freaking break. Samuel L. Jackson was involved. Charles Barkley was there. He's always a he's always a ball of yarn. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I highly I highly recommend it. I think they should do it again. I'll watch it again. I'll waste half of my day sitting there on the couch watching golf, watching Ty Tiger Woods breathe heavily into his microphone, which was on at all times because it was live streamed. Yep. I really had to get a, uh, a lot of refunds because the live stream didn't work right or something. Yeah, they ended up making it free halfway through. But you'd already paid. Bleacher Report, but I'd already paid. You know what, you can keep my money, Bleacher Report. I'm, and you did a bold thing. How did that, how did this become about that? <laughs> Wait, this, that, this is just us talking. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe.